Hi, my name is EJ Massa. One of my favorite cameras from the last few years is the Nikon D750. It takes great stills in the video while only 1080p, had very good color, and the flat profile was very effective, making it the perfect camera for hybrid photographers slash videographers. So when Nikon announced the D850 with 4K full frame video, I jumped at the chance to try it out. Oh, so what, we're doing camera reviews again? Yes, I found credit cards. Buy all the cameras. It's raining. It's raining money that's fake. While this is technically the successor to the Nikon D810, I'm gonna come at this from the perspective of somebody upgrading from the D750 because that's the only perspective I have. In this review, I'm gonna be focusing on the video quality coming out of this camera because while I am a photographer, I'm mostly interested in what this can do for me as a videographer. But I will talk briefly about some of the photography aspects. There's a ton of photo features I won't get to because frankly there's so many and I only really use the basic stuff. Because I'm a basic bitch! Oh, there's my Starbucks! On the sensor front, while the Nikon D810 had a 36.3 megapixel full frame sensor, the Nikon D850 has a whopping 45.7 megapixel sensor, and it's a BSI sensor, and I don't even know what that means. Oh, that's what it means. Compare also to the Nikon D750's 24.3 megapixel sensor, I mean, the Nikon D850 almost has double that. Practically, do I need that much resolution? Nope, but it actually does come in handy. For example, somebody randomly told me to take a picture of this bear statue in this glass case, and I didn't have any of my practical lenses, I only had the Tamron 45 millimeter, and this glass case had really harsh glare no matter where you stood, but there was one spot many feet away that had minimal glare, so I took a picture from there, cropped the image, and I still had enough resolution good enough to print. So while I didn't immediately think I needed that resolution, it did come in handy knowing I had it in my tool set. However, for most situations for the semi-professional photographer, it's a tad overkill. The body is very robust and feels professional, and that's good so you can signal to your friends and other photographers that you are professional. And it's got all the things you need to make it more professional than the Nikon D750. It's bigger and thicker, professional girth. It's got a round, large viewfinder. Professional vision. It's got, it's got these things. Important flaps. The Nikon D750 doesn't have these important flaps. Instead of a mode dial, it has a mode button. Dials are unprofessional. While the D750 has a built-in flash, the Nikon D850 doesn't. Built-in flashes are for prostitutes. Actually, I kind of miss the onboard flash. Hey, hey, the built-in flash is useful for triggering off-camera flashes. Personally, one thing I'm glad transferred over from the Nikon D750 is the awesome tilty screen. Especially because I use the Canon 1DX Mark II a lot, and it could really benefit from a tilty screen. I mean, I don't want to have to get into an army crawl to take a picture of every flower. And you will take a picture of every flower. You will. Take a picture of these. Some people are concerned that the tilty screen will break because they do extreme photography and you know it's something that hangs off the camera, but I'm not too worried about that because I'm a baby man and I only take pictures of babies. Here are my pictures, here's the pictures of my babies. I just have to be careful that they don't, they don't grab onto the screen with their strong baby hands and just rip it off. So there's two memory card slots, a QXD slot and a UHS-2 memory card slot. I haven't gotten a QXD card yet because I maxed out all my credit cards, and they are kind of expensive, and I'd have to get another card reader and all that. I hope the price goes down a bit, but since Sony's the only one making them, I have a feeling that they'll remain rather pricey. Are QXD cards worth it? I mean, every computer has an SD card slot, and they're fairly ubiquitous, but they are a tad fragile. So I'm wondering, besides the read speeds and the write speeds, is the build quality better? Let me know your experience with QXD cards cards, I mean, I, my gut says that I'd prefer two SD card slots. One interesting thing is that for the first time, a Nikon DSLR has focus peaking, uh, but not for 4K video. You can't use it with 4K video for some reason. I wonder why that is. Is it because scaling down a 45.7 megapixel image down to 4K is processor heavy and you can't, you can't render dots? I hope they figure it out and patch it later. It's a shame too, because it's pretty good focus peaking. 
The camera has touch autofocus and live view, but it just hunts too much to be useful in fast-paced shoots. That's one thing Canon has over most cameras. Their dual pixel autofocus is so good, you almost forgive them for crippling their cameras in other ways. Almost. Almost. For the most part, I don't rely on autofocus, and I usually manual focus anyways, but it'd be nice to have good autofocus and live view outside of Canon. Although I hear the Sony a7R 3 has pretty decent autofocus. The usability of the camera is great. I like that you can quickly select a picture profile with a push of a button. You can go from flat to standard profile without having to wade through menus. Or if you want to quickly change the resolution of the video, or change the crop of the sensor, you can zip around the eye menu and change change the settings briskly. It's probably one of my favorite experiences actually using a DSLR and switching between settings. As I mentioned before, this is Nikon's first full frame 4K camera, so you know what that means. That's right, start the B-roll music. Start that B-roll music. And even though this is only 8-bit 420 video, it looks gorgeous. With great color and skin tones and a fantastic dynamic range. Which is especially useful for this snowy landscape with bright whites and dark shadows. And the base sensor's ISO of 64 means that you don't need to use an ND filter as often. My favorite feature is the ability to switch from full frame 4K to crop sensor 4K on the fly. So say you want to get an even closer shot from the same spot, but you don't want to lose out in resolution, you have that ability. Of course you lose out on the benefits of the dynamic range and depth of field of a full frame sensor, but it does open up a ton of DX lenses for 4K video use, like the excellent, excellent 18 to 35 mm Sigma art lens. One of my personal favorite lenses. It's a combo I used heavily in the pit barrel cooker pork butt video. So check out that video for more D850 footage, including a demonstration of the fantastic 120 frames per second 1080p slow-mo, which unfortunately only works in DX crop mode. Slow-mo is great for making stupid things look dramatic and important. I used to work in advertising, and slow-mo is a great crutch if you're creatively bankrupt, which I am. Just a quick note that for the most part, I shot the footage for this review in the flat profile and then color corrected it. If you want to see all the flat 4K footage uncolor corrected, just hit up the iCard or look in the description below. The flat profile attempts to preserve the information in the shadows and the highlights. For example, here's a scene shot with the standard profile and the blacks are pretty crushed. And when we switch over to the flat profile, you can see more detail in the eye socket of this creature. Likewise, this high dynamic range scene, the blacks are super crushed, but you can recover more information with a flat profile. Generally in my run and gun shoots I shoot with a standard profile because it's nice and contrasty and it's ready to edit, but if there's a high dynamic range like an outside scene, I'll switch over to the flat profile. And it's easy to do that switch with the Nikon D850. Oh hey, there's my son again. Oh, so cute. Let's turn down the b-roll music and see what he has to say. Bah. Uh, 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 geez, <laughs> that's dark. He is my son. I also wouldn't sleep on the 4K time-lapse video feature, which can use the electronic shutter to make quick and dirty time-lapses. You just have to specify the time and the rate, and it assembles a 4K time-lapse for you. I'm also very impressed with the ISO performance of the camera. Noise doesn't become a huge problem until, like, 12800, and even then some noise reduction can make the footage usable. However, after that the shadows start to become too techno crazy, and the high ISO settings are not very usable. Why would you do this one? There's no reason to. Look at, look at all the noise. Oh, my son is attracted to the fire. He likes to fire. He is my son. So here's the part of the review where I tell you if this is the camera for you or not. Well, if you're a hybrid shooter and you need excellent stills, high resolution stills, and you need some really good video, and you already have some Nikon glass, well, absolutely, you should get it. And if you don't need that high resolution sensor and 4K video means nothing to you, then just get the Nikon D750. It's a great all around full frame camera. Hopefully a successor to the Nikon D750 comes around with full frame 4K video, then that would be the camera to get. But Nikon and Canon have this, this, this really bad habit of never giving you what you truly want. 
So what I love about the Nikon D850 is the base ISO of 64, the ability to switch from full frame 4K to DX 4K. I love the colors, the Nikon colors are beautiful. And of course, I love the usability and the ability to switch through all these settings and the flat profiles and the resolutions really quickly with those buttons. It's a good experience all around. My advice to you is if you're on the fence about this, since it is pricey, give it a rent, see how it feels. If you're more video focused, maybe try out the Panasonic GH5 or the GH5S. Or, you know, if you want to adapt lenses or you want another all around full frame camera, try out the Sony A7R 3 I hear that's a really good camera. If you can't get away from that dual pixel autofocus of the Canons, then, you know, try them out. Although the 4K does use a motion JPEG codec, which is a little annoying, and it's not always full frame. I don't even think it's full frame in the, their flagship camera, so. Eh. So you'll find more samples of the Nikon D850 in future Red Cow videos. In fact, I shot a vegan mac and cheese festival for Box Mac, and that was shot in the Nikon D850, so check that out. You can also find photo samples in my Flickr. It's, it's in the link below. If you're interested in like the gear I use, I'm going to try to put some of the gear I use in affiliate links uh, below. That means when you click on it, I'll get a little bit of the revenue. So if, you're, if you don't want to just donate money to me through the Patreon, which, which you can do, um, this is an easy way, especially if you're going to buy this gear anyway and you want to support me. It's a great way to do it. And of course, you know, like and subscribe and comment. You can tell me that I'm handsome because I have a, I have a really low self-esteem and I, I need it. And there's a ton of information about this camera I glossed over. Uh, so ask questions in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Anyways, until next time, bye. Mm -hmm.